Hi, and welcome to the next in our series of videos on the autonomic nervous system for the head and neck. On in the previous lecture or video, what we did is we laid out the structures which were involved in transmitting the autonomic nervous system throughout the whole head and neck. What I'm going to aim to do in this particular video is just draw out the root map for the um, cranial nerves which are involved in transmitting parasympathetic um, nerve fun functional nerves throughout the whole head and neck. Okay, parasympathetic. And you remember those were number three, number five, number seven, number nine. Okay, this is by no means an exhaustive list of all the divisions of these cranial nerves. It's just the ones I'm going to put on the board are going to be the ones which are to do with autonomic function. Okay, autonomic having an autonomic function. So here we go. We're going to start off with cranial nerve number three, which is like the ocular motor, and that's going to be drawn in this green pen here. So here we begin. At CN3 over here, starts over here, it goes screaming through the cavernous sinus. Okay, and it splits into two towards the end of the cavernous sinus. It has an inferior branch. And the superior branch. Okay, they're both going to go through the superior orbital fissure and through the tendinous ring because they're working their way to the eye to work the eye's muscles, the extraocular muscles for eye movement. That's number three. And it has this little contribution which we're going to explain a little bit about later. Have we got that, Sean? Got it. Excellent. Next one is going to be cranial nerve number five, CN5, which is the trigeminal. Okay? And that also comes through because it's got to get to the cavernous sinus, because it's got to get to the to the um, to the eyes. Well, it's going to come through, it's going to get to its ganglion. Now, its ganglion is quite big. Okay? We call it a trigeminal ganglion. Um, it's also known as a trigeminal bulb. Okay? So I'm going to call it a trigeminal bulb. It's not part of the, auto, the four autonomic parasympathetic ganglion of the head and neck. So that sits here and it bulges its a big belly into the cavernous sinus there. Okay? So this is a trigeminal bulb. And as you know, from the trigeminal bulb, we get divisions, okay? There's three divisions. There's one, which is your ophthalmic division, which is V1, which is going to leave like that, okay? There's another one, which is your maxillary division, which is V2, which is going to leave like that. And then finally, you have your mandibular division, which is V3, which is going to leave like that. V3 is going to come down through foramen ovale. As it comes through foramen ovale, it's going to split. Okay, it's going to have an posterior division and an anterior division. Okay, the anterior division, as you know, is mainly associated with muscles of mastication. Um, the one sort of note here I'm just going to put down is tensor villi palatini and tensor tympani. The posterior division is mainly sensory, and the most notable one is this one, which is going to come round, it's going to whip around the middle and into your artery. This is auricular temporal nerve, ATA. Okay, that's going to come down, go like that, heading off to the carotid. Glad. The other nerve, which also comes off your posterior, is coming down like that.
is your lingual nerve. Okay, lingual nerve. That's going to come round, and uh, that's going to have also a little contribution which is going to pick up there. We should explain that shortly. And that's going to go and it's going to split into part of it which is going to go to your sublingual gland. And the other one's going to go to your sub sub mandibular gland. Okay. Good. Right, the next bit is for V2, so we're going to go to the maxillary division now. So the maxillary division, we're going to go along here and oh look what we find when we come down here. Foramen rotundum. So it goes through foramen rotundum and then we'll come into this area here. And what happens when we get into this area here? There is basically this and we then split off and we send branches down one greater palatine nerve, lesser palatine nerve, pharyngeal branches, and then we'll head forwards. Orbital foramen. Okay, and that's going to then come down here, and you're going to have your anterior alveolar nerve, middle alveolar nerve, and here you'll also have small hole in here which is called the alveolar foramen and that's going to go in there as your posterior alveolar nerve right from here you then have some other nerves which are going to come out and then come around here and this is your zygomatico-temporal nerve. Remember, they go through the zygomatic bone to get out. And your zygomatico-facial nerve. You then have another branch, which is going to climb up. Up, 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 Head up to the lacrimal gland. Okay, I think that's the, enough for our friend here. What we're then going to do is we're going to move on to V1. Okay. So V1, he is going to climb up here. Okay. It's going to go through both the superior orbital fissure and also that um, tendinous ring and then what's going to happen with this is it's going to have an interesting it's going to have an interesting um, division here now because what's going to happen is you're going to have part of it is going to come down here and that's going to go off as the short ciliaries and then you're going to have part of it which is going to climb up and over so it's going to actually bypass the tendinous ring and it's going to come up up to the lacrimal gland then you're going to have ones which are called the long ciliaries, 
and they are long because basically what happens is between here and here you leave and go straight to the arm. Okay, so here is my long ciliary, short ciliary, and uh, this one here is going to be my lacrimal nerve. Okay, nerve, nerve, and that's, that's V1 there. Okay, so Sean, if you just want to take a scan of that for us. Mm hmm. So, V1. V2, and V3. The only other thing to add is um, here, that will be a contribution received. Right, okay, so we're happy with five. Quite a busy nerve, five. Okay, so five is quite a busy nerve. Lots, lots to do. Trigeminal bulbs, snap into three. Let's go on to um, an age old favourite, which is number seven. Okay, number seven, we're going to do in not green. Let me go for blue. Diffuse matters now. Hang on, though, number seven. So what does number seven actually do? Well, here we go. It comes out and it goes into the internal acoustic meatus. Internal acoustic meatus. So it comes in there, it then goes 90 degree bend, goes through this genicular ganglion. Another ganglion, but this is not one of the four parasympathetic ganglion in the neck, okay? It's the genicular ganglion. Why is it called genicular? Because of his 90 degree bend. Out he comes to the stylomastoid frame. But while he's in there, a couple of things happen. He gets some special branches taken off. One of them is the greater petrosal nerve, which is going to go out through the hiatus. So it's a GPN, greater petrosal nerve, out through the hiatus. <coughs> and then this is going to work its way up to, <coughs> up to foramen lacerum. And then from Freeman Lassrum, it's going to find its way into the pterygoid canal. And it's going to meander down the pterygoid canal, down the pterygoid canal, down, 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 all the way to pterygopalatine fossa. When it gets there, it's going to come and it's going to. Okay. The next branch, which gets stripped off seven, inside the ear. So what happens inside the ear? It's almost like going down a dirty, dark alleyway, and then something awful happens to seven. Um, we've got this one here, which comes out. This is cord tympani. And this one is the one which can be seen going across the eardrum. The eardrum is normally located about here. So it can be seen going across the eardrum. It comes out and it climbs and then it descends through the petrotympanic fissure. Petrotympanic fissure. And that's going to come and it's going to terminate right there. Okay, I'll just make this line a bit thicker so you can see it. 